So, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Ahmadu wa Salli ala Rasulil Karim. Today, inshallah, if Allah wills, I want to discuss. Uh, you can say, in some ways, the top ten du'as of distress. At least from the perspective of many, many scholars, uh, I would give you the history of all the books written on this issue. In, not in terms of no one wrote a book on ten most important du'as of distress, but. What has happened is many books have, people have written kitab, uh, books on farj, which means that after, how do you find a way, how do you find an opening after distress and anguish and difficulties? And even people that are dealing with ruqya or dealing with problems in life, this is like the ultimate, Ya Allah, please help me, please open the doors, right? So many, many people have written books on these issues. And uh, the, um, the experience of what, people show is uh, what they have written in those books and those books seem to have many of the same du'as so let us look at some of these du'as and uh, this is written by one of the great scholars who was a Maliki scholar uh, and so let us look at uh, what is being said here inshallah ta'ala in this first narration which is extremely important it's so important it's one of the Two du'as that at least I remember that in which the Prophet said, teach this like Qur'an. And this is one of them. And the other du is the du'a of istikhara. Okay. So this is like as important as the du'a of istikhara, which used to be taught like the way the Qur'an used to be taught. So, we always begin in the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa lahu alhamdu. Wa salatu wa salam ala Sayyid al-Mursaleen. The Prophet said, "Sallallahu alaihi wasallam, Musa bin uh, Musa, uh, Abi Musa Ashari, 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 radiyallahu an." He says, "An Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam qala, 'Man asaba hamun aw haznun, whoever uh, finds himself in great uh, difficulty or in distress, sadness, fal yadu bi hadhi al kalimat. Let him call upon Allah with these words." Allahumma inni abduka. Oh Allah, I'm your slave. And let me just mention wa ibni abduka. And my father is your slave. Wa ibni amatika. Amata is the female of abd. Okay. So you remember the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu where he says, Antalida amata rabbataha. The amata will give birth to her rabb. So the female slave. Who is a slave? The slave is owned. Master says, you can sleep here. He sleeps here. Master says, you sleep on the bed. He sleeps on the bed. Master says, you have to wear, these are your clothes. He, that's what he has to eat. Uh, and that's what he has to wear. He says, the master says, this is going to be your food. Or this is not going to be your food. That's what it is. So he says, Allah, I'm a slave of yours. My father was a slave of yours. My mom was a slave of yours. By the way, this hadith is very authentic. And I'll mention something about the different versions of this hadith. In fact, one day I want to talk about only this hadith because of its importance. I think in, especially in the times that we live in, this is an extremely important du'a. Extremely, extremely. I'd say at least definitely the top 10 du'as that we should know. But this is humbleness. This is telling Allah, I'm nothing. I'm absolutely nothing. And if you, you know, if there are 10 people asking for something, right? 10 people are asking for something and all of them are dressed good and the one who's not dressed good and the person has the niya or he's a generous person, and he wants to give to the poor. He's going to give to the person who looks the poorest, right? So the when you are in front of uh, the king of all kings, so you want to break yourself down, right? In kisar, you show yourself broken, right? Uh, and then you show yourself as in pain and in brokenness. So you'll see this. This is the ultimate. Allahumma means by Allah by all your beautiful names. Inni abduka wa ab ibni ab ab abdika wa ibni amatika nasiyati biyadik. My my forelock is in your hands. Meaning my destiny is in your hands. Wherever you want, you can take me to Jannah or to Jahannam. It's all ultimately madin fi hukmuk. Whatever is your hukum, it cannot be escaped. Okay. Wa adlun fi qadaak. And, Ya Allah, whatever you decide is justice. So this is now the ultimate plea of humbleness. Okay. 
اللهم إني عبدك وابن عبدك وابن أمتك ناصية بيدك ماد في حكمك عدل في قضاءك أسألك بكل اسم هو سم هو لك Allah, I ask you by all your names you have named yourself. Now, after breaking yourself down, now you're going to praise Allah and beg Allah. And so after inkisar, there is ittirab, meaning now you're going to now praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with, as a beggar, right? As'aluka, I ask you. بِكُلِّ إِسْمٍ With every name هُوَ لَكْ That is for you. سَمَّيْتَ بِهِ نَفْسَكْ That you have named your own self with those names and those titles. أَوْ أَنزَلْتَهُ فِي كِتَابِكْ Or you have any of your titles or any of your names that are revealed in any book. أَوْ عَلَّمْتَهُ أَحَدًا مِنْ خَلْكِكْ Or you taught any of them to any of your creation. أَوْ إِسْتَعْثَرْتَ بِهِ فِي عِلْمِ الْغَيْبِ إِنْدَكْ or you chose as a preference to keep it hidden, secret, in the unknown with yourself. To do what? أن تجعل قرآن ربي قلبي Make the Qur'an a, 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 a delight for my heart. A growth for my heart. A, a, a you can say, a, um, a spring for my heart. A life for my heart. أن تجعل قرآن ربي قلبي والنور صدري and a nur in my chest وجلاء هزني and a way of removing any of my uh, sadness depression وزهاب حمي and removing any of my difficulties and, and, and distress in my life in another narration it said that after you say these words you ask for what you want to ask for because now you've asked Allah with his all his names and begging him and begging him with his names. And then you've asked Allah with the most thing that Allah loves to teach. Ar-Rahman wa allam al-Quran. Ar-Rahman taught that Allah loves to teach. And so you mention that Quran, which is the heart of the Prophet. And Allah loves the Prophet. And the Quran is in the heart of the Prophet. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that you, loves that you mention that you, that Allah make the, your heart like the heart of the Prophet, basically, right? And then after you have broken yourself down, after you have done praising of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, after you have mentioned that your reading, that you want the reading of Qur'an to be your source of the removing of your worries and your sadnesses, now you ask for what you want. And so the Prophet said, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُولُهُنَّ وَعَلِّمُوهُنَّ Say these words and teach these words. فَإِنَّ مَنْ قَالَ هُنَّ وَعَلَّمَ هُنَّ إِلْتِمَاسْ مَا فِيهِنَّ Whoever says these words and learns these words and holds on to these words إِذْ هَبَ اللَّهُ كَرْبَهُ وَطَالَ فَرْجَهُ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make his difficulties go away and give him a big opening. Give him a big opening from the problems that he has. In another narration, uh, it says that after you say these words, you ask for what you want to ask for after saying these words. And this was the amal of one of the Salaf al-Salih. I forget his name, but it will come up actually in this very book later on. Okay. So the second dua. And then Ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, he says, قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ قَالَ Whoever says the following dhikr or wird or dua لا إله إلا الله قبل كل شيء لا إله إلا الله قبل كل شيء لا إله إلا الله بعد كل شيء ولا إله إلا الله يبقى ربنا ويبقى ربنا ويفنى كل شيء Ufiya min al wal huzn. So whoever says, La ilaha illallah qabla kulli shay, La ilaha illallah before all things, La ilaha illallah ba'da kulli shay, and La ilaha illallah after all things, Wa la ilaha illallah yabqa rabbuna, and not every Allah will, our Rabb will remain, Wa yafna kulla shay, and all things will perish. Awfi min al wal huzn. For him, there will be the removal of difficulty and 
sadness. So this is the narration of Ibn Abbas, and we know that he was also the great Mufassir of Quran, Khibrul, the 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 Hibrul Ummah. Okay, and uh, the next narration is. And Abu Bakr radiyallahu an qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kalimatin makroob The words for the one who is in distress and great difficulty is Allahumma bi rahmatika arju Allahumma rahmatika arju O oh Allah by your most beautiful names I desire your rahma Fala takilni and don't put me away ila nafsi to myself Tarfat al-ayn even for a blink of an eye Aslih li sha'ni kulla and make right for me all my affairs. Allahumma rahmataka arju. Fala takilni ila nafsi tarfat al ain. Don't leave me to myself even for an, a moment of an eye. Aslihni sha'ni kulla. And make right for me all my affairs. Okay? Next dua. And in a very, very authentic narration from Bukhari al Muslim that is muttafaqun alay. عن ابن عباس رضي الله عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يقول إن ذا الكرب. so the prophet used to say in every distress and difficulty لا إله إلا الله العظيم العظيم لا إله إلا الله العظيم الحليم لا إله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله رب العرش العظيم لا إله إلا الله رب السماوات وس رب السماوات السبع ورب الأرض أرضين رب العرش الكريم let me try to say that again a little bit better. La ilaha illallah al-azim al-halim. La ilaha illallah rabbu al-arsh al-azim. La ilaha illallah rabbu al-samawati al-sab'i. Wa rabbu al-ardi wa rabbu al-arsh al-kareem. And you can find this hadith in Bukhari as well as Muslim. And this hadith is by Ali ibn Talib. Ali ibn Talib radiyallahu an. Now you'll notice we have narrations by Abu Bakr and Ibn Abbas, Ibn Mas'ud, these are great Sahaba and they try, taught great du'as that unfortunately the Ummah is beginning to forget. So this du'a of Ali radiallahu an, an Ali radiallahu an, he says, قَالَ عَلَّمَنِي عَلَّمَنِي رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ The Prophet taught me sallallahu alayhi wa sallam إِذَا نَزَّلَ بِي كَرْبْ when difficulty and distress come upon me, an aqul that I should say, La ilaha illallah al halimul kareem. La ilaha illallah al halimul kareem. Subhanallah, tabarakallah, Rabbul arsh al azim, walhamdulillah, Rabbil alameen. Rawahu Ahmad, fi musnad. So this is the dua of Ali ibn Talib. La ilaha illallah al halim al kareem. Subhanallah, tabarakallah, Rabbul arsh al azim, walhamdulillah, Rabbil alameen. In another narration, the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ya Bani Abdul Muttalib, O people of Abu Muttalib, Iza nazzala bikum al karb, when difficulty comes upon you, O juhad, or where there's a lot of struggle, O liwa'u, or if there is, you can say a type of difficulty. So, Lawa'u uh, can also mean like a type of war or extreme like shadidu uh, diq, extreme like narrowness and difficulty in situation. فَقُولُ Allah Allah رَبُّنَا لَا نُشْرِكْ بِهِ شَيْئًا Allah Allah رَبُّنَا لَا نُشْرِكْ بِهِ شَيْئًا Allah Allah رَبُّنَا لَا نُشْرِكْ بِهِ شَيْئًا Allah Allah our Rabb لَا نُشْرِكْ We don't make shirk bihi with him shay'a in anything. Okay. In another narration, again to the, his own family, Prophet uh, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, uh, in, as narrated by Aisha radiallahu anha, uh, Allah, Allah, Rabbi. So over there was Allah, Allah, Rabbuna. Over here is Allah, Allah, Rabbi. La ushrik bihi shay'a. In another narration by Asma bint Umais, qalat qala li Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So people would come to him perhaps with difficulties and he would teach them these words. Allah Allimuki Kalimatin Takulihin Indal Kar. 
Should I not teach you of some words? When you are in distress, you should say them, Allah, Allah, Rabbi, la ushrik bihi shay'a. So these were words the Prophet ﷺ taught people when they were in extreme distress. And in the Musnad al-Firdaus an Ja'far ibn Muhammad, uh, Ya'ni Ja'far al-Sadiq, Haddathani Abi an Jaddi annahu kana idha, uh, idha hazza bihi amrun du'a bihadha du'a. So the Prophet ﷺ, he says, you know, my grandfather taught me, meaning the Prophet ﷺ, these words, Allahum ihrisni bi'aynika allati la tunam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you, uh, you have hisar or you have, uh, you, 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 you protect me and guard me, you know, like the guard of the door, okay. اللهم احرسني بعينك with your eyes التي لا تنام those eyes that don't ever sleep وكنفني بكنفك and make it suffice for me yourself meaning you Allah الذي لا يرام who no one can attain meaning is unapproachable ورحمني بقدرتك and have mercy upon me by your قدر على علي فلا أحلق بقدرتك علي فلا أحلك and have رحمة upon me فلا فلا أحلك and don't let me perish أنت رجائي you are my hope فكم من نعمة عنمت بها علي قل بها شكري and how many ni'mas of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they are in which my shukr was completely deficient. And وَكَمْ مِنْ بَلِيَّةٍ ابْتَلَيْتَنِي بِهَا قَلَّ بِهَا صَبْرِي And how many baliyah, difficulties and tribulations and difficulty and trials there were in which my sabr was deficient. فَيَا مَنْ قَلَّ عِنْدَ نِعْمَةَ شُكْرِ فَلَمْ تَحْرَمْنِي so, O oh, the one in for whose ni'mas my shukr is too little, uh, don't uh, make me like a probate, don't like dismiss me. Ya man qalla'inda bali'atihi sabri falam tahzilni. And O oh, the one who tested me uh, on my sabr and because of my little sabr, don't humiliate ye. Humiliate me. Ya man, man ra'a amali, man ra'ala khataya. And the one who sees my difficulties, falam tahdani, falam yafdhani. Don't expose me for my sins. Ya dal ma'roof. And Allah is the possessor of all good. Alladhi la yanqada abadan. The one who never perishes. يا ذا النعمة التي لا تحصى أدادا The one who is the possessors of نعمز that can never be counted أسألك أن تصلي على محمد And I ask you that you send your blessings on محمد وعلى آل محمد And upon the children and the progeny and the people and the, the people of محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وبك أدرأ في نحور أعدائي والجبارين and I put you as like my protection against my enemies and جبارين and the tyrants اللهم إني على ديني بالدنيا عيني الله help me على ديني with my دين بالدنيا against this دنيا especially nowadays this is very important ولا وعلى آخرتي بالتقوى and help me in regards to my akhirah with taqwa. Wahfizni bima ghabat anhu. And protect me regarding the things that I which I am unaware of. Annahu la takilni ila nafsi fi ma hadartahu alayya. And don't leave me for myself for the things that come in my presence. You can say. Ya man la dhurruhu dhunub. Oh, the one who is not affected by or harmed by sins and and your kindness doesn't take anything away from you 
habni ma la yanqusuk and give me uh give me a gift habli ma la yanqus waghfirli and forgive me wa la yadhurruka innaka antal wahhab waghfirli ma la yadhurruka forgive me and in and my forgiveness to you doesn't uh, affect you innaka antal wahhab you're the one who gives the gifts as'aluka farjan qareeb i ask you of an opening near near opening so i don't have to wait long time to get out of this distress wa sabran jameel and i ask you for a beautiful patience what is kan wasi'a and rizq that is spacious wa afiyati min al balaya and afiyah in and and forgiveness or afiyah kindness min balaya in regards to diff- trials and tribulations wa shukri afia and uh, and shukr and afia i ask for you shukr gratitude and afia shukr and afia okay and uh, then there are other narrations that mention the same thing as anuga shukru ala afiyati i ask you of shukr regarding afia kindness and uh, sufficiency wa as'aluka ghina 'anin nas and i ask you o allah to make me ghina uh, and self sufficient from people where i don't have to rely on people la la hawla wa la quwwata illa billah al-'ali wal-'azim there's no power other than allah who's al-'ali wal-'azim uh and then abu hurairah radiyallahu an narrates that jibril taught the prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam these words uh which i'll go through and then i think we should be coming to the end of what i want to do for today tawakkaltu ala alhayy alladhi la yamut i trust in the one alhayy alladhi la yamut the one who is living and never perishes walhamdulillah alladhi lam yattakhidh walada and alhamdulillah for the one who never adopts a son walam yakun lahu sharikun fil mulk and he has no sharik in kingship he has no partners in kingship walam yakun lahu waliyyu min adhulli wa kabbiru takbira this is in sutul uh isra uh the last uh one of the last verses i think the the last verse wa lam yattakhid lam yakun lahu sharikun fil mulk wa lam yakun lahu and he has no wali no friends min adhul because of weakness wa kabbirhu takbira and the takbir is big and and and, and glorify him with great glory So ya hayyu ya qayyum Anas radiyallahu anhu was the slave of the prophet and the maula of the prophet and the caretaker of the prophet and the servant of the prophet he narrates kana nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam idha hazza bihi amr he would when a difficulty would come upon the prophet he would say ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith ya hayyu ya qayyum bi rahmatika astaghith يا حي يا قيوم برحمتك استغيث ابو هرير ابي هرير رضي الله ان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم اذا احمه امر when some affair was difficult on the prophet or it made him sad رفع راسه الى السماء he would raise his head to the sky and he would say سبحان الله العظيم اذا اجتهد في الدعاء قال and when he would make a lot of dua a lot of dua he would say a lot of ya hayyu ya qayyum ya hayyu ya qayyum ya hayyu ya qayyum and this is the riwa of ibn this is the riwa of uh, imam tirmizi and then hasbi allah ni'm al wakil uh riwa abi al dunya fi al dhikr an aisha radiyallahu anna nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam kana idha ishtaddat ghammahu massahu bi yadi ala ra'si wa bi lihya wa lihyati when the prophet would be very concerned very very concerned he would put his hand on his head and he would put his hand on his beard right and he would say hasbi allah hasbi allah wa ni'm al wakil so inshallah we can end here today and uh, maybe another time we can continue on these duas of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam but these duas are very important and the duas of farj kitab al farj are very very important this book this particular book is called abwab al farj okay abwab al farj and let me see if i can just quickly this is called abwab al farj uh 
This is written by Sayyid Muhammad bin Alawi al-Maliki Hassani. Okay. And uh, this is a very famous book when it comes to dua. And there are other books. of They're called the books of Faraj, which means the books of uh, openings when you're in difficulty. And this is something we all need to learn because the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in the end of times, you have to make dua like you're drowning. So these du'as, they help us get into that state of mind that when you're thinking about them and when you're saying them and you're doing the dhikr, you're not, don't do it. And I want to be clear about this, that if you are in distress, you don't do these du'as, even though you have to do du'a with yaqeen. It's one of the, uh, I think, ten conditions of du'a. You have to do du'a knowing Allah will answer you. But at the same time, we do like strong, strong du'as because we're not there. We're like babies. We're spiritual babies. And so we do like strong du'a one day, two days, three days, one week, and then we're like, okay, nothing is happening. I give up. It's better to do a little bit every day and do it for a long term without knowing that Allah will answer you, but the timetable is not in your hands. How Allah answers you, it's not in your hands. But you do a little bit every day, du'as, you do every day of reading of Qur'an, especially with that first du'a that I talked about. You do every day of Qur'anic reading, if you're especially reading Qur'an according to the moon, you do your du'as after reading Qur'an or before reading Qur'an, you read this du'a and then you read the Qur'an and you make it a source of removing your distress and removing your difficulties and you do these du'as of farj, du'as of removing distress, du'as of opening and you don't do this with you know yes there are some people that can do really strong every single day because they don't get unmotivated when the du'as are not answered but because we are weak and our situation is if our du'a is not answered for one second we cry like babies we are spiritually deficient so what needs to happen as a result is you know then we need to uh, run for the marathon we need to grow slowly so that when we're pleading Allah and asking Allah and we're begging Allah and we're breaking ourselves before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we're showing inkisar or ittirab and we're uh, showing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're, you know, we're, we need farj from Him. We need an opening from Him. So this is something that you have to do according to your spiritual level. You're not at the level of uh, the Prophet that can constantly be in a state of like asking Allah for opening because of one problem after another problem, we're not there. So that's why Allah has mercy upon us. We should practice as much as we can and we should definitely get into the mood of of these du'as because these du'as are actually great proof of Allah's existence because no person could make up these du'as unless it was real. You know, when you look at these du'as, think about these du'as and how many of these du'as they are and how they praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Definitely this was a person who believed in what he was saying and he believed in who he was reaching out to. And he, this person, he really had yaqeen in his rabb, meaning the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Okay, inshallah I'll end here. أقول قولي هذا أستغفر الله لي ولكم ونساء المسلمين والمسلمات. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.